reports. We're going to discover um, how to share them on our Facebook business page, um, as well as how to incorporate them into your website. Um, so there are a couple tips and tricks and different ways to do that. And then there are ways to do um, brand serve market updates that you can also share. And those are nice because you can share those on Instagram as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you. All righty. So here we are. We're going to first, the first, very first thing that we're going to do is dive into Prospect Square. Um, but I always like to kind of show you, kind of like GTS, before we get there, where we're going. Um, so there are different ways that you can do this. Um, and if you guys could mute yourselves just so that we don't get any uh, feedback on the recording. Um, I've taken the Prospect Square reports and I've actually placed them at the very bottom of my website. So this is one thing that you're able to do. Um, I don't have to go into Prospect Square to get my reports anymore. You can see I have quite a quite a few of them um, just because I'm trying to reach as many counties as possible. I'm a referral agent, so where agents work, I like to have that information so I can refer. Um, obviously, you would want to go ahead and include anything that you feel comfortable. If you feel comfortable driving to Arundel uh, Anne Arundel County and selling in Annapolis, feel free to include that. It doesn't have to be where your office is located, anywhere that you feel comfortable buying or selling real estate. Um, these are uh, sections, so I will show you how to incorporate those into your website. Um, and then I also have um, down here, kind of just click here to view the most recent real estate Baltimore County report. And I do have it hyperlinked. These are all hyperlinked and I can get to that area report. <coughs> Excuse me, you'll see, you know, I can get to the average days on the market, the sales price, and then all of that good market update information. Um, so you'll see that here on your report. So again, just some different ways to do that. These are just photos in Canva. Um, you can always just upload a stock image, make sure at any time that you're adding any photos or any photo um, to your marketing, to your website, to social media, that you have the right to use them. Um, there is such a thing as copyright infringement. I've worked with agents that have had that called on them before. It's very expensive. Um, and I always look at it this way. If I've paid a photographer to go out and take pictures of my listing, um, for whatever reason that listing were to go off the market and another agent were to list the property and use the photos that I paid for, I'm not going to be very happy with them because those are my photos. Um, it's kind of that same kind of deal. Um, so let's jump right in. Um, again, from desk, we're gonna jump into Prospect Square. Um, and we're going to actually find the report. So I'm going to give you the easiest way to find these reports. They do have live links. Um, yours will go right in. Mine always makes me toggle one more. Um, I'm going to go into reports and I'm going to look for an area report. Um, I'm just going to choose the area report because it does update once a month. It's going to update on the 5th of every month. So on the 5th of May, we're going to be able to see April's report. From here, you'll see I do have a lot of reports that are already created, but for this purpose, I want to go into preview and share. So again, we've gone into Prospect Square. We've just clicked on reports. We've clicked on area report, and then we're going to click on preview and share. What that's going to do in the system is it's going to pull every county in the Mid-Atlantic. Uh, so for us, it's gonna be Maryland where we're licensed. Um, and it's also gonna pull every zip code. Um, so for this purpose, if I wanna find something, um, I'm gonna scroll down now, do be very careful. Uh, there is a Frederick County for Maryland and there is a Frederick County for Virginia. Um, so for this sake, since I'm talking about it and, and they all do say MA, that is for Mid-Atlantic. It, it looks like Maine, um, but it is Mid-Atlantic. Um, or, or Massachusetts, I guess. Um, so I'm just going to check on um, the, the Frederick County since that was the one I was talking about, and I'm going to do a search. So what that's going to do is it's going to give me all of the statistical data and all of the market data for Frederick County itself. So if I want to do the whole county, I can do that. Um, or I can actually break that down by zip code. 
Um, so if I just want Jefferson, if I just want to do Middletown, I can do those things. If I just want Ma Mount Airy, I can do those as well. And you will see it will break it down into single family homes. If there are condos available, it will break it down. Townhomes is kind of gone by the wayside. I'm not really sure why. Try to check into that for you guys. Um, but for this purpose, usually I just use the general. Um, so for Adamstown, I would just use this link. So that's how you're going to get to the links. All of these links are live links. So if I include this Frederick County link on my website, so you'll see here I have Frederick County, I have a stock image. Anytime that I click that particular link, it is a live link. Um, so now it says March again. If you click on it next month, it's going to show April. Uh, so it's always going to update for me. I don't ever have to update um, myself. Um, I will say if you guys have any questions, feel free to unmute, interrupt any time, ask any questions as we go along. If whatever I'm saying um, doesn't make sense, if I'm not explaining it clearly, please let me know. Um, again, I, I have no problem with that. Just kind of interrupt me and be like, hey, what about this um, as we go along? So you'll see um, again, I have these on my site, so I'm going to go into desk and I'm going to click on in touch because I'm going to go into the background of my in touch and I want to be able to add this prospect square report. From in touch, when I get into my main dashboard, I'm going to go to my website because I'm going to add them to my website and I'm going to go ahead and edit my site. Um, that's going to take me into pages and menus. So here's where I can customize the structure. I can add pages. I can take away if I want to add a page that's all, you know, area of reports, you know, real estate area of reports. I can do that. Um, I can add them to my home screen. I can also add them to communities served. So I'm going to show you how to do all of those things. Um, so for this purpose, let's say I want to add a page. I can just hit the add button here. Maybe I want to say, you know, area. Um, I'm going to say area real estate reports only because I know um, that if I type too much, see I'm still typing and nothing is happening. It's going to cut me off, so maybe I just want to say area reports. Um, you can add an SEO title, a meta description. You can find out a little bit more by hovering over the circle. Um, maybe I'm going to say, you know, area real estate reports. Um, and then I'm going to hit save. What that's going to do is it's going to add a page to the very bottom and it's grayed out because it's not currently published. I don't want someone to go to my website. They're going to see something that's half done. They're going to think I'm unprofessional. So I can actually add anything that I want to this page before I publish it. You're also able to add Prospect Square reports to your home page or any other page that you have. Um, that you have here. So you could see I already have some on my main home screen. They're all the way at the very, very bottom. I have them in sections um, with a little verbiage here that I did steal from Prospect Square. So you're not going to plagiarize it. It's there for you to utilize. You can take that right from Prospect Square and use it on your website. Um, and then I also have a different option down here where I could just put various photos and link those reports if I want. Um, so we're going to go in and we're just going to use this new page here. Again, it would be the same on any page and we're going to go in and edit the page. Um, once we've edited the page, um, I'm just going to start from scratch at the beginning um, and you can see here I can add a widget. So I have the option here in the corner or right here to add a widget. Basically, a widget is just going to be a section or a paragraph of this page. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and add that widget and I'm going to add some custom con uh, content. This is where I'm able to say, you know, like local area report if I want. Um, I'm just going to say one just so 
I have it there. Um, and then this is where I'm able to add them any way that I see fit. Um, I can add numerous photos with the links underneath, um, but remember you do want to add stock images. So there is some photography and brand serve that is wonderful, uh, beautiful, high resolution, high definition photos um, in brand serve. I also use unsplash.com. I am a big Canva user. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and click on the photo button. So that photo button is here, uh, third from the right, and I can choose an image. Now I can choose an image that I've already uploaded into the system. So you'll see I have a, a lot of images on my website. Anything that I've already uploaded will be saved here for me. I can search the catalog. So if I want to look through the banners and the photos that are already here, I can use one of them um, or I can upload my own image. <clears throat> and again, as long as I own that image, I have the right to do that. So I'm going to go to pictures and I'm going to go to stock photo. Um, I have a whole folder folder on here of things that are stock images. Um, and for that sake, I'm just going to use this barn um, so I'll use I'll use this barn photo since it's the first one that I saw. Um, you know, Frederick County's got some some rural uh, areas to it, so it kind of looks like the image. You know, the place that I'm depicting. Uh, if you have a, a professional photographer, you can always have photography taken. I always like to ask the photographer that's taking photos of my listing to take some area, you know, some area shots for me of the local neighborhood, uh, whether that's a really pretty barn or a local park, things of that nature, because I can use that in my marketing as well. Um, so here I want to say, you know, Frederick County real estate area report. I like to put Cobble Banker Realty in my meta description just because that's going to oomph that up a little bit in the search engine results on Google, Yahoo, Bing, uh, because it is such a heavy hitter. And then I'm going to go ahead and save it. Now you're going to see the photo is enormous. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and left click on my photo and you'll see we have these little boxes here and I can just kind of drag it. Um, but as you're dragging, pay close attention to that number. Um, hold on one moment. I'm so sorry. Um, someone is knocking on my door. Listen, does he need to have that 3D printer when he goes to school? Yeah, he, yeah. Why don't you give it to me? Can you right. take a second? I'm teaching can... a class. Okay, well, how long are you? Can you, you just bring him over, grab it? He can just grab it because I don't know what he okay. needs for it. Okay, okay, okay. I don't know what he needs. All right. All right. Thank you. Oh, I see. So very sorry. That was my dad. He has no concept of working from home. My apologies sincerely. OK. So oh, here we were. So we have this photo. Um, and again, as we drag and drop back and forth, you're going to see that number is going to change. Um, so it does take a little bit of finesse when you're starting out to kind of get that number where you want it to be. Um, and you'll see here. So let's say I want that to be 500. Um, it's it's really kind of tricky to get it there, and maybe I'll just leave it at 499. Um, I can take this, I can hit this button here, and my uh, my apologies to mine is not working. I actually have a help desk ticket in, but you should be able to put that in the center if you want to center that out. Um, and then underneath, I'm just going to say, click here um, to view. Um, a Frederick County area real estate report. And you can go through and you can, and again, my apologies, you can change the font, you can change uh, the size of the font, you can bold that if you want to. So, well, they fixed that part. Um, and then once that's written, I'm going to go ahead and highlight the words because it's like GPS. I want to tell somebody where they're going first, and then I'm going to tell them how to get there. Um, so here I have my words written out, 
and I'm going to go up to the link, the little chain link fence here. And I'm going to paste that URL um, and you can see my fault because I copied something else afterwards, but I'm going to go to Prospect Square. I'm going to find that Frederick County report and I'm going to highlight the report. I'm going to copy it. And then that's what I'm going to paste here for the URL. And remember that report is that's a live link. So that's going to update every month for me. Um, now I'm going to periodically go onto my website and just double check my hyperlinks are working. Um, but for the most part, it's just going to update for me. I want that to open in a new window. Um, in a new window, you'll see if I click on this report, it's going to open in a new window so that when I exit, my page is still there. Somebody hasn't lost where they came from. Um, so that new window there, and then I'm going to hit OK. Um, so again, you can put these, uh, you can center them, justify them, et cetera, put them in there. Um, and then I could scroll down a little further. And if I want to add another report, I can do that. So if I've created a page, um, maybe I just want to say, you know, click here to view reports. I can also go in and if you want to cheat and use what's on my page so you don't have to look for it in Prospect Square. I just take this information and I can put it here. Again, you can definitely, uh, and my apologies that mine is not working. Um, you can click this button. You should be able to center it. You can justify it if you want. Um, and here we're going to discover uh, current market data below for the area. And then I can have photos and maybe I have Frederick County and then maybe I've listed all of the count, you know, all of the zip code areas underneath. So I have um, Adamstown and Brunswick and Emmitsburg and Frederick. Um, so I have all of those underneath uh, and they're all hyperlinked to those specific area reports. Um, now I might not want to do that necessarily because I want someone to reach out to me to ask um, and that might be something where I kind of personalize or customize this information to let people know you know keep in mind it, it's from the multiple list system if you're interested in receiving an updated area report in your inbox each month let me know um, you know if they want clarification let me know um, and it might say you know an updated area report for your area in your inbox each month. So if maybe they don't see that area here, they know I can still get that for them. Um, and then I'm able to, once I've added everything that I want, I can hit next, I can hit save. Uh, we do know in, in the in touch that we do have to do the preview and save in order for it to go live on our site. Um, mobile, tablet, desktop, you guys know I love my preview. And then I'm gonna go ahead and save. Now, when I save that, I didn't hit the publish button. Um, if I want to publish it, I can hit this page here to publish directly or go back to the main page and publish it that way. Um, so I can go ahead and save that. My changes have been saved. Um, if for whatever reason, so let's say I didn't hit that publish button um, and I came back and it's still grayed out here, I can just click through. I can hit that publish button um, and it's going to go ahead and successfully update and I want to always hit the save button again. So what that's going to look like now, let me go ahead and refresh my page uh, because I don't want to visit the page I already had open. That's going to be all the old information, um, but down here um, you'll see it will. Um, Oh, area reports because I did make a new page. Someone can go through, they can click on that and they can get that information. And again, I apologize. I do have a help desk ticket bin. They are working on fixing. I'm not able to center anything or change the font or all the fun things that you get to do with it. Uh, but you but you see the the purpose of it is just to put the information there. They can click through on that hyperlink and you see here. I did something um, and that's why I always say go back and refresh and check it out because what happened was I did not get all of that prospect square. Um, I didn't get all of this particular link. So I want to make sure that I've gone through and I've clicked on the entire link. 
Um, so something that I always suggest, just in case you you do what I did, um, is I'm going to open a new tab and paste that in there to make sure that it works. Um, and I'm just going to copy it again from the browser. And this is very, very easy to fix. If you go and you're finding that it's not working, um, you can go back in, edit the page. Uh, we do have to go back in and edit. Um, so we'll just hit next. And that's where I'm able to um, take that. You just hit this button here and it's going to disconnect or it's going to remove the original hyperlink that I put in that was not correct. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and highlight that. And again, I'm going to paste that link in, open that in a new window, hit OK, next and save. And we know that we always have to preview and save because um, you guys know how much I love my previews. We're going to preview and save. So now we have that on our site and I can go back in and I can refresh this page just to make sure. And then when I click on that link, it's going to take me to my area report. Um, now there are different ways that you can utilize this on your website. Um, again, you can add a page if you want to add them all to a separate page. Um, I'm going to go ahead and delete that because I already have that information several times. Um, something else that you're able to do is add sections. Um, so I'm going to add um, I'm going to add a page. I'm just going to call it sections for the sake of this to show you how to add those. Um, and again, we're just going to go into edit page and it could be any page that you're on. Um, so, you know, if I'm on my communities page or maybe I'm on my home page or maybe I've created my own page and that's where you have the option up here to put things into sections. Um, I like this because for these particular um, area of reports um, that I have at the bottom, it was a simplified way of getting them to be very organized and they're I'm a little OCD, so getting them to be the same size and also spread out where I didn't have to figure out how many spaces in between or you know what's going to make it look good. Um, so I can go in and I can determine how many sections across what I like. So you see they have some options here for you. Maybe I want um, one on the left and one on the right. Um, if you have something where you want to describe something, maybe you have a property that you want to list and you want to have the verbiage here and the home here or the property photo here and the verbiage here, you can do that as well. Uh, prospect square reports, maybe I want three across or I want four across. <coughs> it's really completely up to you how you want your website to look. So I'm just going to do the four across just for the sake of showing it to you. And I'm going to go ahead and hit save. So you'll see now my screen got a little crazy um, where I have add widget, add widget, add widget, add widget. Are you still, Angie, are you still in Prospect Square? Um, so this is in touch. Okay, so what if we don't use in touch? Do we have to save everything out of Prospect Square and apply it where? That's where I don't know what to do. Um, so if you don't use in touch, something that you would be able to do is the hyperlinking. So if you have a website that you're using, most of them do have the functionality when you go in and add any type of custom content, um, you would be able to type out, you know, like click here to get a, a Frederick County area report and you would just come in and use this particular link. Um, to go in and link that so that they would be able to click through on your website. Like you could see here, these just say click here. Those are my hyperlinks. You don't have to have the photos if your website doesn't have that capability. Um, you could just literally write out, you know, click here to view the area of report and someone would be able to click through and do that. Um, that's just one way that you'd be able to to push it out. Um, yeah, but with the in touch, you're able to add some photos so you can go into the each individual widget. You do have to do them independently. Um, so I just used custom content um, and I didn't give it a headline. That's not necessary um, or required. And then you're able to go in, choose a photo. Again, I just upload a photo from my computer. Um, I have stock images saved to the computer that I know are free or any stock images that I paid for 
or maybe professional photos that I've used. Um, I can give that a, a meta description if I would like. And then save. And this is where I want to pay close attention. <coughs> excuse me to the size of the photo. Um, so I believe what I did on my page is I did 350 as the first number. The other number will just kind of come along with it and you can see it. It's very, very finicky. Oh, there we go. 350. Um, I did click on that to um, put that in the center and then I could say, you know, um, Frederick County area report. Um, and then I probably just want to say click here for your Frederick County area report. And again, I can just highlight that. Um, and this is how you would really hyperlink on on any website that gives you that ability to put in that custom content. Um, and I'm going to grab that particular link for Frederick County. I'm going to go ahead and type that you are paste that URL in there type new window and I can hit next and I can hit save so it's going to load that widget and now you can see what that looks like like I would probably center all of that just for that purpose um, but then I can go on to the next one I can do custom content again um, I can find another photo of another county um, you know maybe I want to do Baltimore County um, so I would just make sure that I have, you know, something that looks like the city. Uh, maybe I want to do Baltimore City instead of Baltimore County. Um, when I upload that image in and I hit save, this is where it's really important. Remember, I put that other photo at 350. I want to make sure that this photo is at 350 as well. And that's going to be the very first number. Um, so 350 and you'll see that this photo is not as long as the other photo. So that's OK. It, it's not going to look the same on the website, but I probably want to make sure that I have a, a photo that's the same dimensions, um, but I can go in and I can say, you know, um, click here for your Baltimore City um, area report. Um, and then I would just go to Prospect Square, the preview and share. I'm already there um, so I can go into that find button. And I can look for Baltimore City. It will say Baltimore City County, so I apologize for that. I want to check that one off and make sure that I've unchecked anything else. Um, and then here I have Baltimore City. So now I have that particular link and I can copy that link um, and I can go back in. And again, I can highlight that, paste the URL in, open that target in a new window and hit next and hit save and then I'm going to get that. Um, you'll see the, the picture's a little bit shorter, um, but here I'm going to have that as well. When I'm finished with all of them, um, I'm going to go to that preview. So now you can see this is what it's going to look like on the desktop. It's going to show me what it's going to look like on a tablet. It's going to show me again what it's going to look like on a mobile. I can go ahead and publish this page from here if I would like to, if it's not already published and I can hit save. Um, as soon as I do that, um, it's going to update my website for me. So here I have that sections. Um, and when you click on it, you'll see here um, I have those photos and you can click through and you can get to those reports. The reason that I like to have them on my website uh, is for efficiency. If I want to share a Prospect Square report, I need to go to desk, log into Prospect Square, go to reports, go to area report, go to preview and share, and then find um, wherever it is that I would like to share. So let's say I want to share Harford County. I'm going to go ahead and search that. I'm going to find it now. I have Harford County. And again, every city that you see or every town that you see in here will have its own zip code. So we have 21001, 21009, 21013, 21014, and 15. So it's lumped them together. Same with Frederick, um, where there are a lot of different. Um, so we have Frederick, and it has lots of zip codes because it's very large. It's going to lump all those zip codes together. Um, you know, and each of these has its own zip code. So it's not going to willing, you know, it's not going to whittle it down to um, I'm in this area and I want this specific subdivision. It's not going to do that. 
um, but it will give us zip codes. So I'm able to go in and get those zip codes here. Um, I can add them again to my website any any way that I that I see fit. Um, if I decide later that I want to update that, I can always unpublish it, go in and and do some stuff to it. Um, I'm just going to delete it because I have this stuff on my my site already. Um, but the benefit of having it on my website is that I can literally go to my website at any time. I can give somebody my business card. I can say, you know, scroll down. You're going to find some really great area reports, um, but I can access my report. And again, instead of going into desk in a prospect square, going into reports, preview and share, looking for it, it's right here. I can go to my website, scroll to the bottom, click on Carroll County, and here's my report. The benefit of that is if I'm doing an open house, um, I do have the ability to go in and print this as a PDF. I'm going to print it, um, you know, front to back, save the trees. And I'm going to take it with me and I'll be able to hand it out and let people know, oh, well, this is for Carroll County, but if you would like one for just Westminster, uh, let me know. I can send that directly to your inbox. Because now the person wants that report, they're going to give you their email. You're going to be able to market to them and do some lead generation and turn them from a lead into a, a signed client. Um, the other benefit of having this information on your website is you can share to social media. So that share button in the middle there at the top, you will see every social media known to man except for Instagram because um, we know Instagram is photos only, and we'll get to that one in a moment, um, but Instagram is photos only, so we can share to LinkedIn, to Facebook, via Messenger. Angie? Um, yes. Angie, seeing you said it was a live report, once you've done it once, it will update to the current months from, like, moving forward? It will. Um, okay. So, for example, and, and you brought up a good point that I was going to mention, if I go in here now, there's also a Facebook button over here on the right. Um, if I go in now and I decide I want to share this to my Facebook page, I'm just going to go ahead and hit the Facebook button. It's going to bring it up with whatever photo is currently on my report because you guys can change those photos. Um, that's why mine looks different than yours. Um, and then I'm going to go down to share on a page that I manage and I'm going to pull up my Caldwell Banker Realty business page that I use for my business. Um, I can say, you know, check out the latest real estate in in Carroll County. Um, if you would like to receive um, this report in your inbox each month, actually I'm going to say automatically each month, please let me know can um, set up any area you are interested in. Something, something of that nature. Um, and I can go ahead and post that to Facebook. Um, now I have a great report. Now, when someone goes to Facebook, so let's go ahead and go to Facebook um, because I do wanna show you. Um, when I go to my page and I look at that, um, when someone clicks through, it's going to have that that beautiful photo. It's going to have whatever verbiage that I typed in, and it's going to automatically go to the March, because we know March is the last one that we have, uh, that March area of report. Um, I'm going to go ahead and delete that one just because I just literally posted something a few moments ago. Um, as we scroll down, and I won't bore you too much with my page, um, but we'll go through and try to find another post um, somewhere down along the lines. If I posted something, for example, in February even, and let's say somebody's going through my page and they're just, they're checking me out. They're looking at me. What is this person posting? Like, what is this all about? What's going on? Do I want to call this agent? And they will literally go through lots of different things um, on your page. So please don't think that they won't. Um, you know, here is another example. So we'll get to this in just a moment of way that you can post it where it's permanent. 
Um, so here I posted it March 15th. So this was for February. So this this isn't going to change because this is a photo. This is also how you get it on the Instagram. Um, but as we we go down a little bit further, um, and usually what happens is I post these in a class and I've already posted something, so then I delete them. Um, but as we go down, so here you'll see here we have Towson. Um, as we go through, if I already have one that has been posted, so here we go. Baltimore County Lutherville Timonium Area Report for January 2021. Um, so see what's new in the real estate market. If you click on that, it's going to give you March. It's always going to give you the most updated. Um, sometimes I like to, to say that here, like it's always going to be updated. Um, for whatever reason, this day when I posted it, it still hadn't updated for February. So that's why it still says January. Um, but it's always going to give you the most updated report. So just know that when you post it, um, and I don't know that too many people are really going to go back that far. I mean, I went pretty far back on my page to get there because I post consistently. Um, so I don't know too many people that are going to go that far back and look for that, but they're going to get the most up-to-date data no matter when they click on it because, again, it is a live link. Um, if you would like it to be a little more concrete, um, if you would like to have a photo um, like that blue, that beautiful Cobble Banker blue photo that I had, if you would rather it look like that, um, or you want to post on Instagram, because we know Instagram doesn't take links to anything, but they will take photos. Um, I'm able to pull up my Prospect Square report. Um, so let's just go with Hartford County because it's the one I'm looking at. Um, I can go into desk and I'm able to utilize BrandServe. Um, and it's actually a lot easier, I promise, it's a lot easier to utilize than, you know, a lot of times people are like, oh, BrandServe is not that easy to use. Um, this part is a little bit easier, I promise, than most of it. Um, so when I first come into BrandServe, I'm going to be uh, efficient with my time, and I'm just going to type in market update in the very, very top here. And you'll see I have a market update, a market update, and a market update, and I can view all of my results. Um, Kim, it looks like you have, uh, do you have a question? You can unmute and ask me if you'd like. Okay, hey, I uh, it just uh, occurred to me, I could probably use this in my Moxie presentations. Do we just, yes. are we able to do that there too? Yep, I can show you how to put that in there as well. Definitely. Cool. Um, yes, definitely. Um, so for this, you can choose again if you have that that photo that you own that you want to use to make it look pretty. If you just want to use the data, you can do that as well. I'm going to go ahead and do the photo just to show you how to upload that in. Um, so additional info doesn't really have anything because it's not going to tell me what to say when I post it. That's really up to me. Um, I'm going to go in and customize. And this is really, I don't want to say it's simple, simple, but it's just kind of flowing, um, flowing with it. So market update, and I'm just going to say, you know, Harford County, and I'm just going to say it's March 2021. Let's say I'm going to do an image. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and pull this Bel Air image here, um, just because that's, even though it looks like Christmas, because it is Harford County region name. I'm going to do Harford, Harford County. And the month and the date range, I want it to come out as 2021 on my report. So it's, it's you know, anytime that somebody looks at this, they're going to know exactly when this data was from. Um, the property type is all residential types. I didn't pick just condos or just single family. If you choose those, you can, you can go in and put that information as well. And you have to select at least three pieces of data to include, but up to five pieces of data. Um, and when you do that, you can just select from the drop down menu. I like to kind of go in order that they're here, but you can definitely change the order. Um, you can do it in the order that it shows over here as well. Uh, so median sales price, and then we have the average sales price, um, how many properties are for sale, how many properties have sold, and what are the average days on the market. So I'm actually able to go in um, so I can go in again. This is why I have them on my website. You can go into Prospect Square as well. 
Um, but once we get to this specific report, so let's pull that report up um, and you scroll down, all of that information is right here. So the median, um, let's say the the median sold price is 285. Then we have the average sold price. So median is two. 285 for the median sales price. So medium is 285. I don't do numbers well. That's why I keep repeating it. Um, the average sales price I went ahead and copied uh, so I didn't have to think about it. Um, and then I can go in and look and see. Um, so 439 for the listings. So we can go in and do properties for sale 439 because those are new listings, properties that are sold 349. And average days on the market is 20, 23. So I'm going to put 23. And then we know our DBA logo every single time that we market ourselves, we have to have Caldwell Banker Realty. So I'm going to cheat the system a little bit and I'm just going to type in CBR. That's going to pull that up for me so that I have the correct logo, the real estate commission, and Caldwell Banker Realty won't be mad at me um, that I have the wrong thing. And I'm going to look very professional. Now it's asking for a disclaimer. Here is a very easy way to do that. I'm going to go to my area report. I'm going to scroll all the way to the very, very bottom. And I'm going to take the first two sentences. I'm just going to copy them. It lets them know that it's derived from the county records, the multiple list system. Um, you know, it's believed to be accurate. You know, they should rely, you know, they should personally verify that. That just gets you out of any loophole of somebody saying, well, you told me it was this and it, you know, whatever. Um, so we're going to go ahead and paste that. Um, and then we're going to agree to the image right term. So you do want to read through those just basically that I own this photo. I didn't steal it from the internet. Um, and I'm going to generate a proof. Now, remember in BrandServe, we never want to use our proof because it's going to be magenta, uh, we, but we can view it just to make sure that it looks good. So here we have that photo. This is exactly what it's going to look like. Once I download it, all of this type will be white um, and it probably will not be as blurry, um, but I can go through. I can add that to my cart, um, go ahead and place my order download that and upload that straight to Facebook. I can upload that to um, Instagram. If I'm on my phone doing this, I can upload it on my phone. If you're like me, I do all of this on my laptop. Um, so what I do is I like to save the photo to the computer and I'll email it to myself or I'll send it via Facebook Messenger. Um, or if I'm going to post this on social media, I can either get the file and save it to the computer, or I can just publish it to social media right now. Um, if I do that, I do have to connect my Facebook business page. Um, so I've already done that. It's going to make me log in. You will need to know your password. Um, so I want to go ahead and continue as myself. It will upload to my business page. I can add message here. Um, and I can also schedule this to come out at a different time. So that's something that's really nice as well. Maybe I've already posted a few things today. Maybe I want this to come out on Saturday um, and maybe I want it to come out at nine o'clock in the morning. Um, I can do that. I'm going to preview it. It's going to show me what that's going to look like when it posts um, and I can go ahead and say publish. That's going to go into Facebook and in my scheduled post. I can go look at it there. I can delete it. I can update it from there if I need to. Um, once that is published on Facebook, what I like to do is just take out my phone, go to my Facebook business page. I, I have an Android, so it might be a little different with an iPhone, but I can save that photo directly from Facebook onto my phone. I can copy the text and I can go right to Instagram and I can post it. Um, so then I have that brand awareness on both my Instagram and my Facebook business pages. People are seeing it um, in both places. Um, and again, you'll see that on, on our business pages. Um, you'll also see it if you ever want to share it. Um, we'll go to Facebook and any of your um, office pages. Um, again, sorry, I'm picking on Harford County here because it was the first one that I saw. Um, as you scroll through, they are posting all of the new, um, posting all of those new properties. So, I always remind people, try to get those photos in 
landscape if you can they do post better to social media um you'll see we'll scroll down just a little bit um through all of these lovely top teams and top agents um oh here so here it is here um i'm going to cheat and just click on it and we do have these they will scroll through so if you're interested, we don't have time in this class, but I can show you how to put them as a, a little slideshow here as well. You know, what's the status of real estate where you live? You know, we have real time data and updates. So, you know, we do push that out from the office to try to get everyone to to call you, especially if you're doing floor duty. Um, you can share that directly from your office page as well. So here you'll see that and you can just hit the share button and share that um, to your business page. So more options, share to a page, find your page, and then type something there and you will get that automatic video as well. Um, something else that you can do, and I'm glad that you that you pointed that out, is you can actually add these to your uh, Moxie presentations as well. So if we're in CBX plus Moxie present, um, let's say that we have a presentation. I've already created it and I want to send it out to to my clients. Um, I want to add this presentation, you know, this link in there. So for this sake, I'm just going to go in and I'm going to select one that I already have. Oh, Greg, did you have a question? You can go ahead and unmute yourself. grab that oh where will we be able to find the recording oh i will send it out to you i'll send you the recording when this is over um and it'll also be on my youtube channel so i do have a youtube channel i'm throwing all of my recordings on there so you guys can find them at any time because i know you guys work around the clock um so i'm just going to go ahead and pick one that i've already created um this will be the same thing if you create new uh once you get to pages um, you're going to go ahead and add a page. So I can add a page from the library here. I want to create a new page. Um, creating a new page, I can upload a PDF if I would like to. So if you want to upload the PDF of your area report, I probably don't want to include the whole thing, um, but maybe I want to include a page of it or I can just build a page. Um, so this gives me um, the way to, you know, do my my web preview, um, how I want to section that out. Maybe I want to include two different area reports, maybe a county report and then the area report. I can do that. Um, so for the sake, I'm just going to select this one just to show you how to do it. Um, and you'll see here again, I had Harford County. I'm going to go ahead and copy that particular link. And here I'm able to add um text i'm able to add images video and more um, so when i click more you can see there are lots of different options here um, let's see if it's going to allow me so one thing that you're able to do is add what's called an iframe i want my report to show directly in my presentation i don't want my client to have to leave to go out on the internet somewhere I just want to show them directly in this presentation. I can click it's one, two, three, four over from the top. When I click on that more button, I'm going to click on it. It looks like a little almost like a, a lens from a camera or like a little eyeglass there and it says iframe and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paste that URL. Remember, I got that live link right here from Prospect Square. I'm going to paste that URL in make that a little bigger so we can see it and the width and the height are not set um, so you can play around with these generally speaking I'm just going to do 600 to 600 um, I'm going to enable them to be able to scroll up and down um, you can have a frame border if you would like and I'm going to hit OK now don't panic that's going to say iframe it's going to say that for a hot minute as it's thinking that's OK. So maybe I want to do Harford County and maybe I'm listing their home in at Aberdeen just because it's the one that's there. Um, I can go through and I can also get that link as well. Um, so you can do this where you just have one on a page. But here maybe I want to add more than one up. Oh, there's that that area report. 
Um, so I can add here so I can see 600 across is probably a little uh, a little too narrow. So I'm going to go ahead and add this URL as well. And maybe that width I'm going to use 900 um, and maybe I don't want it to be as long. Um, again, you can play with these numbers to get them the way that you want them to be. Um, you know, play around with them a little bit up here. Maybe I have some text and I want to say, you know, um, local area real estate reports. Again, you guys can format this any way that you that you would like. Um, you know, you can maybe make the text large. You can bold it, et cetera. Um, and then here I have the report here as well that someone can click down and they can look through. And again, that's not quite wide enough either. So I can go back in there and play with those numbers. Um, let's say I decide after I have chosen this, I only want to put one report. I just want it to take up the whole the whole screen. Um, I'm, I'm able to add another section here if I'd like. Um, and here you're able to select. I just want it to be one module across. So now again, I have one across. I can hit that more button. I can add that iframe in. I can enable the scroll bar and hit OK. And then actually, if I want to get rid of this one, I'm just going to go ahead and trash it. Now, remember, if you delete anything in here, I'm going to have to go back in and redo it if um, you know I've already deleted it. I'm going to hit save. And then I always like to put, you know, area of report, maybe which area of report. So this one is for Aberdeen. I always enable editing just just in case. Um, and remember, it will show however you label it. So maybe I want to put Aberdeen area report. Um, so real estate um, information for the area of Aberdeen. And again, you guys can type however you'd like. I'm going to hit save. Now it's going to put that report in and you can see that it's really, really small. Um, so again, I can go back in. I can change that. Maybe I want to make the height something. So I'm going to make the width 1200 just to make it very, very wide. Hit OK. And now you can see it's much, much wider. Um, and then I can, you know, I added another one. I wanted to show you this. I know it gets a little confusing, but I wanted to change it. But notice I didn't take that other one out first, so I can just put my cursor there. I can hit the back button. It will remove the other one for me. Again, it's going to take it a while to come up, but I'm going to go ahead and save it. Once I save it, now I have that local area real estate report. I can show this report to them directly in my Moxie presentation. Um, you'll see here it's going to be the first one here. I can move it around. I can put it anywhere that I want um, in that report. And then when I go into my actual presentation, uh, you'll actually see that report start to finish. Here's my Aberdeen area report, and they can literally sit here and scroll through and go through that entire report and see what's going on in that Aberdeen area. This is why they need to trust me when it comes to pricing their home correctly. Days on the market has gone down. Average sales price for Aberdeen has gone up. Here is the statistical data showing what the actual market is doing, not what the media is saying. Yes, we have a new president. Yes, there's a pandemic. Yes, there's lots of craziness out in the world, but this is what's actually going on in this area. Um, and we can see, you know, median days on the market, how many listings, you know, how many sold. So in March, there were 49 new listings and 39 properties sold. Um, and it shows, you know, what are were the trends? What is the data showing? Um, you guys know how to use this when you're sitting with your clients. Um, use it to your advantage as you're going through the charts and the graphs. There are little question marks on each of them that will give you information on what the graph represents. Um, so if you're not confident going into a presentation, you can kind of look through that. If it's something that you're sending to someone, they're able to click through and get more information on, on, what, on what that is as well. Um, so hopefully that was, was helpful. Um, 
Okay. Um, and, you know, again, you can also, one other thing, um, you know, I showed you how to put it on your main InTouch site, um, but don't forget that you guys have these community pages. Um, so I have lots of community information at the top, and I have lots of communities served. Um, so you're also able to go in, add the area reports to each of your communities individually. Uh, you'll see Joppa Town is my poster child here for everything that I do. You know, I have some parks and rec videos and different links to different things. And here I have an updated report via that hyperlink. So very easy to just say click here, you know, to view an updated area report. They can get to the area report here or also that iframe that I've added into the background um, and they can scroll through and they can look at my report directly here online. Um, I also like to remind people that I can send it to them automatically. Um, sometimes that that whole uh, purpose of you know letting them know it's going to be set up automatically that means I'm not going to be calling them every month I'm not going to be harassing them or hounding them or anything that they think that I'm going to be doing it's just something that they're automatically going to be set up for um, the last time I did prospect square reports I used my mother um, as my guinea pig and within five minutes my mother had emailed me and said can you send me this every month I'd really like to get this um, so they are reports, of, you know, people want this data. They want to know what's going on in their area. Um, even if I'm not selling my house, I like to know what's going on. Are all of my neighbors going to be packing up and moving away? Is the neighborhood going to change? Um, you know, do I have $80,000 worth of equity in my house that I can sell it and move up to my dream home? Or, oh my gosh, like my mom said, we can make X amount of money and retire in style and downsize into a condo where we don't have to mow the lawn. Um, so things of that nature, people are always thinking of different things. As you're doing your prospecting, if you're using Cole Realty Resource, if you're getting those emails, you know, you can put them in a prospect square, send them the area report, send them to your website where they can get that information. Um, again, include them in your Moxie presentations. It could be a buyer presentation as well, where you're giving them, you know, the statistical, all the market stats that they need. Um, you can share it on social media, let people know that they can contact you. You can set them up to get it automatically. Um, and this is how you show that you're the area expert. So that's why I like the Prospect Square reports. It shows that you know what's going on in the area. I don't have to go into the MLS and research all of it. It's just there for me. Um, and as with every tool, I never tell anyone that this is something that I use from Cobalt Banker. Like I sit down and I put this report together. It's it's it takes me you know a while to go in and set my reports up, but I have really good data I'm pulling from the MLS for you because you're my client. I don't want to make it easier for you to read. So here you go. Um, so. Again, we put it on Facebook, put it in your community served on your InTouch website or really any website that you can hyperlink to. Um, use those brand serve tiles to share on social media, on Instagram um, for the market updates. You know, put it in your Moxie reports um, and you can really utilize it. Again, you guys know your business the best. Um, however, it's going to build your business, but just let people know that you you can share the information that they're looking for um, and that just shows you to be the area expert. Um, with that, are there any questions? Okay, um, so sorry I flew through it. I wanted to give you as much information as possible, but I will send you the recording, uh, the link for the recording if you'd like to go back and view any specific segments. Um, and and Brenda, I can help you with that. So I'll shoot you an email for that as well. Um, so with that, I will leave you guys. It is uh, just after two o'clock, so I do want to be respectful of your time. Um, and um, we'll stop our recording. Thank Excellent. you, Anne.